All right, yep, I got a new camera. The new Sony A7R III. I can't even begin to explain how much this thing, first off, costs, and second off, features on this thing are insane. They're blowing every other camera out of the water right now. Okay, first off, it's a 42.4 megapixel sensor. If you don't know what that means, that just means that that's a lot of information to be captured in, a, in your images. If you want to be printing like super big posters, you're going to have so much clarity because you can just zoom in so much. It does 10 frames per second, which is super fast. It phase detection 399 autofocus points, which is ridiculous. Eye autofocus, five axis steady shot inside, meaning that this camera has in-body image stabilization, which is going to make for a lot better smooth footage. Dual slot, touch you can touch screen. It's got S-Log 2, it's got 4K video. So let's just open this bad boy up. A few videos ago, I talked about how I usually buy only used or refurbished gear, but this is brand new. So first off, you get your manuals. You have this strap that I never use. I have hardly used the Sony straps. Your charger, more HDMI cables. Oh, also, side note, I'm pretty sure this charges with USB-C, which is a huge factor, super cool bonus. All right, here's a battery. Um, also, the battery on this life, I've heard, is insane. So the batteries are a lot bigger. Hold on. Just to put it in comparison, this is my Sony A7S battery, which I'm filming on right now. And then this is a Sony A7R3 battery. So it's almost like twice as big, but it offers almost like three to four times the battery life. I've heard the Z lithium thing that they're making now is just blowing away everything else. It's actually my first time seeing it. Wow. I'm just gonna need to take a moment. This is a Sony A7R3. This thing is a beast. Okay, I'm praying that Sony batteries come pre-charged, so we will see. Oh, comes charged. Thank you, Sony. All right, moving on to the second piece of equipment that I got. It is the 16 to 35 2.8 G Master Sony lens. This thing is an absolute beast. First off, 16 to 35 millimeters is a super wide focal length. It's really great on a gimbal for those landscape shots. 24 is wide, but sometimes it's just not wide, wide enough, especially for architecture or landscapes. It's not so great for portraits, so I wouldn't use it for that, but for this type of stuff that I'm gonna be filming using this, like events or other scenarios, I think it'll be really handy. In case you didn't know, G Master is kind of like Canon's L series. So it's the top line, um, best quality. Ooh, all right, Sony. So they put it in this really nice, it's actually a very nice um, camera bag. Ooh. It's actually not as heavy as I thought. I thought it was gonna be a really heavy lens. Oh, wow. This thing is so sexy, guys. Can you hear that? Can you, can you just, hmm, buttery smooth. Okay, it also comes with a strap. I have no idea why, it, oh, it's a strap for the bag for this thing. And then your lens hood. Ooh, I just love that sound. Wow, this is a beast. Let's look at this thing, it's actually, Together, it is kind of heavy. I can already tell I'm gonna have a lot of fun with it. There's a bunch of different custom buttons that you can play with. The build feels really, really nice. Compared to my Sony A7S, which is more of a plasticky build, this is very aluminum. It's got like some magnesium shit. Oh, and listen to this. Isn't that ridiculous? And I was doing it, watch, it'll work even while it's still on screen. Because sometimes when cameras shoot that fast, the screen blacks out, but this one doesn't. Okay, I'm gonna play around with this for the next couple of days or weeks and come back with a comprehensive, but not so comprehensive review. 
All right, so that was kind of part one of the review. This is part two. I just got some new items in today. I haven't unboxed them, so I'm gonna do that right now. Super excited for this next part. There's a lot of packages. Okay, let's start with the big one. Ugh. All right, so if you don't know, I love gimbals. I use them for a lot of my cinematic videos just to get that nice, steady shots. Um, it really changes the whole vibe of your video. It gives it a really cinematic look. And it's not something that can be done handheld and it just looks unprofessional if you don't have some kind of gimbal or stabilizer. I have used the glide cams before. I used to have one of those, but it was a little hard to figure out. They're also super bulky, super heavy to carry around. So the gimbal I was using is the Beholder Icon DS1. It is this thing right here. Um, I was using this for about the past year or so. And it's a good gimbal, I liked it, it did what it needed to do, but sometimes there are some quirks and it would kind of like jolt out on me and I wasn't able to get the exact footage that I wanted, which is why I have made the upgrade to the Moza Air. This is a badass gimbal, it can hold a lot more weight than my previous one, which is kind of the biggest reason that I got it. I was trying to fit my Sony or my Canon with a big lens and it just wasn't able to hold that weight, so I'm excited for this. All right, so as I'm unboxing, here are my thoughts on gimbals. It's that they're not necessary for filmmaking, especially if you're starting out. Like, it's definitely an investment to be laid later, uh, an investment to be made later in the process as you develop as a filmmaker. But they really do ch take your videos to the next level. Ugh. Ooh, this is a huge box. This is actually a lot bigger than I thought. Okay, so it's this really nice Pelican case. It's actually my very first time ever using one of these or ever seeing it in person. I've seen a lot of reviews on them and it just looks super sick. Battery, charger, accessories case. ZM cranes are awesome. I think the Crane 2 is probably the best in the field. And the reason that I, I could have got that, but the reason I decided to go for this was that it, first off, it comes with this dual handle where you attach these handles on, um, kind of like the Ronin M. And that just allows you to get smoother footage and more precise control over it. But the ZM Crane, in order to get that, that's another extra $100. It's a little bit bulkier than I would want, and I really like this like smooth aluminum feel. I did a lot of debating between the Moza Air and the ZM2, and I just feel like for what I need, the Moza Air is gonna be completely fine. Next up, we have the Samsung T5 Portable SSD. This is 500 gigabytes. So essentially, like what I didn't realize was that an SSD is a lot faster than an external hard drive, which is what I usually use. So I think my workflow now is going to be when I'm on the go, transport everything onto this smaller hard drive so that's faster and more portable than carrying around a bulky hard drive. And then whenever this 500 gigabytes fills up, I'll just transfer all that information to a two terabyte or a bigger hard drive. So then I have backups of both. I think it's just gonna be a better and easier workflow. Ooh, it's pretty sleek, it's very small, fits in the palm of your hand. Um, next, I got the Rode VideoMic Pro. I was using the Rode VideoMic Go, which is like that small $80 one, but the audio I was getting from it wasn't that great. I'm using it now, so maybe it might sound a little bit different. But for bigger scale stuff, I feel like this is... One week later. Okay, yeah. So for bigger projects, I just think that the VideoMic Pro is going to be a lot easier to use. Um, you're gonna get a lot better quality sound, especially in windy situations. I don't know what is in each of these packages. All right, next up we have a 64 gigabyte Sony SDXC uhs 2 M series uh, SD card. The reason I got the M series was that it reads up to 260 megabytes and then writes up to 100 megabytes which is great because for my Sony a7R 3 that's gonna mean I'm gonna be able to take a lot faster pictures um, and not have to wait for them to lag um, and get that buffer speed faster, which was a huge problem I was finding. Um, I have been testing the a7R 3 out for a few days and when I, when I use it on like dance shoots or things like that, it just takes so long, it, like, it starts to lag. 64 gigs, um, I feel like 64 gigs is a pretty good amount of storage for me. I never like to have so much storage on one flash drive or on one SD card because then in case that file gets corrupted, blah, 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 you don't have to worry about that. So I usually go with 64 gigs. I need to have like a cool mail time intro like Casey does. So if anyone wants to make some cool logos or designs for me, hit me up. 
Oh, I totally forgot I ordered this actually. Not tech, but I got a cool CDG t-shirt. Let me try it on real quick. Super soft, super comfy. I like it. Okay, last, I don't really know what this is either. Why do they make packaging so difficult nowadays? So this is a HDMI to micro HDMI cable for this brand new thing. This is the small HD external monitor. Um, I'm shooting on the camera right now, so I can't show you, but essentially this should plug in and then, then I can see display. You get the idea. Okay, so that's all for this unboxing. Thank you guys for watching. I haven't had any time to play with any of this new gear, so I'm super excited for that. Hopefully this is gonna take my filmmaking and photography, photography content to the next level. Super excited for all this. Make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.